brings up images of anger, fear, strong emotions. And since Mars is mostly red, I guess they just attach those connotations to it. Aren't a lot of violent storms on Mars, or is that Jupiter? Angry? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it was angry, but it was, it was a red color, I think, seen through the telescopes. I don't know. I think it's some misconception from the 50s. I've got something that's even more spaced out than those stories about the angry red planet. Have you heard of this thing called the face on Mars? They say it's larger than the Golden Gate Bridge and taller than the World Trade Center. At first, I thought it was some kind of joke. Maybe an Elvis sighting? <laughs> but there are a lot of people out there who aren't laughing. There are some who believe that the face was constructed by ancient alien beings. And others say it's simply the result of natural phenomena. They believe the idea is absurd. But our mission on Inside Space is to investigate, not ridicule. So, let's get to the bottom of this thing they call the face on Mars. And we'll let you be the judge. In 1976, planetary scientists sent Viking, a robot explorer, to visit Mars. While in orbit, it took thousands of pictures and one of them appeared to be a humanoid face on the red planet. A face on Mars. At first, excitement, but later, NASA said the image was an oddity of light and shading, an optical illusion, and for several years it lay in a drawer, totally forgotten. Then, two engineers at the Goddard Space Flight Center rediscovered the image, and here's what they found. The face seems to have well-defined features, eyes, a ridge-like nose, and a mouth, plus a helmet, similar to ones that the pharaohs of Egypt wore. But this face is a mile long, and it juts out of the Martian landscape, staring directly into space. Most scientists suggest that a face on Mars is impossible, because no life existed on the planet to build it. However, some people argue that Mars had life, intelligent life, but millions of years ago, the planet turned into a desert. Mark J. Carlotto, a PhD of electrical engineering, became fascinated with the face on Mars and wrote a book called The Martian Enigmas. It detailed his study of the original Viking photo using a process known as computer enhancement. The computer was used in three ways to analyze the images of the face on Mars. First of all, the computer was used to clean up the imagery, which contained a number of defects. Secondly, it was used to enhance the data to bring out subtle detail in features not visible in the original batch process NASA data. And last, it was used to magnify very small features that were not visible in the original data. Once we recover the, the structure of the face, we can use computer graphics techniques to simulate different lighting and different perspective views. The results show that the face is not a trick of light and shadow as originally contended by NASA, and that it looks like a face as you change the lighting conditions and as you change the viewpoint. And the debate is still not over. Opponents believe that it's just a mountain with a strange shape. Well, what's interesting about this phenomena is that it's not limited just to the face. Uh, there are a number of objects to the southwest that have been called the city. Uh, this includes a polyhedral object that certain people have dubbed the fortress. There is a five-sided pyramid christened the DNM pyramid after DiPietro and Molinar, who were the two individuals that rediscovered uh, this imagery in the NASA archives. About 100 kilometers south, there's an intriguing bowl-like st like structure with linear features etched into the surrounding terrain. Wow, it's a 
powerful stuff. Oh, with me is the author of the book, Dr. Mark Carlotto. Welcome to Inside Space, Thank Mark. you, Michelle. Now tell me, why did you get interested in this face on Mars? Well, I was reading the newspaper back in 85 and saw this picture of, of a face discovered on Mars by the Viking orbiters in 1976. I had followed the mission at the time and didn't recall any such discovery. And, and this face, did you think it was an important thing to study? Well, the original photography of the face revealed very little detail. So I felt that using some of the tools at my disposal, I could do a better job to enhance the imagery and look a little closer into the face itself. And what did your analysis reveal? Well, in that preliminary analysis, revealed that there was quite a bit of subtle detail that was not uh, apparent in the original batch processed NASA photographs. The original photographs were very contrasty and showed what appeared to be a mask. But when we did image ana analysis, we could go in and find very detailed structures. There were cross symmetrical lines over the forehead area, broad lateral stripes across the face, uh, a fine structure in the mouth that, that suggested to some teeth. Why do you think NASA and other scientists haven't devoted any effort to, to further investigate the face? Uh, I think there's a couple of reasons. First of all, the, the imagery is of marginal resolution. It's about the same quality that we get from commercial satellites orbiting the Earth. And many don't believe that we can detect ex extraterrestrial signs or signs of extraterrestrial activity at that resolution. But I think perhaps a more fundamental reason why others in the mainstream planetary community haven't gotten involved in this is that it's, it's, it's viewed as being borderline, it's viewed as being outside conventional science because... But isn't that the scientist's job to investigate what is fascinating, what is uh, uh, an enigma? It is in a perfect world, but uh, some scientists are reluctant to stick their necks out. What do you think the face on Mars is? It may be a monument, it may be a message, it may be something, something else, something totally unexpected. Or it may be a eroded mesa, uh, a pile of rocks, in other words. What's the most fascinating thing you think it is? Well, of course, it's... Aliens it's, from another world or Martians who lived on Mars? These are all possible. We can't scientifically address these questions right now. All we can do scientifically is test whether this feature is this face, these other objects, the city, the fortress, and several others that have been detected are artificial. If they are artificial, then we'll go to Mars and we'll find out the answers to these questions. But if they're artificial, this will fundamentally change all of our lives. I want to thank you for this really interesting discussion. And thank you for joining us inside space. Thank you very much.